Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to True Vine, where we are celebrating 78 years. 78 years. Can we give God some hallelujahs? Can we give God a hand clap of praise? 78 years. This is our birthday. Hallelujah. Oh, we can do better than that. If it was your birthday party, you'll be on your feet. We'll celebrate. We'll celebrate. Hallelujah. So good. So
wonderful God. He's a powerful God. He's a mighty God. Do I have any witnesses in here? Come on. So you have been so good. He's always making ways for us. Always opening doors for us. Always taking care of us. Always healing us. You have been so good. You have been so good. You have been so good. Everybody, come on. You have been so good. 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 God, you've been so good. You have been so good. You have been so good. Clap your hands, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He has been so good. He has been so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait, wait, excuse me. Something wrong with this camera.
This is the place where this is the place. We glad you came to lift up his name. We glad you came. You won't leave to the final line. We welcome you to our guests, family and friends. We welcome you. Welcome. Where you been? You been out all night long. I thought you was gonna come take me to church today. Lord. I didn't miss two Sundays. Oh Lord, Mama, I told you I'm not going back to that church. Besides, I don't understand what you miss about it. And you know what? I seen most of them people last night. Yes! I know that's right. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Like, but Mama, don't it come on online? Like, why can't you watch it on now? What's the difference? I'm watching it online, and it's a big difference. I'm not homebound yet. Now I got legs to walk, I got eyes to see, and I can got a mouth to praise. And I want to be in the midst of the people, not just watching it. I miss it all, babe. I miss it all. Mama, I just don't understand. What do you miss about it? Everything. I miss from the time you walk in the front door to the time we go get in our cars. I miss seeing the mushers with them big smiles. I, I miss seeing the deacons and you know sometimes the pastor he meet you outside before you come in. Yeah. Honey, I just miss it all. And you know what? My favorite part is that welcome song. Oh, I love that welcome song. I, I mean, and I love the sermon too, but oh, I love that welcome song. <laughs> now, one of my favorite things, oh, is that prayers and, and the scriptures. You know, sometimes them deacons get so carried away, they go singing songs and it ain't even their time. Boy, I tell you, I just, I just miss it. I miss it so much. Woo -wee. But can you just hear them deacons praying and saying them scriptures? I could just hear. Close, close your eyes, baby. I could just hear them singing it right now. Look at For our scripture reading coming from mm. Matthew's, the 16th chapter, starting with the 13th verse, when they was acknowledging who Jesus was. Jesus asked them, disciples who do you think I am and they replied some say John the Baptist others say Elijah and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets but what about you he asked who do you say I am Simon Peter answered you are the Messiah the son of the living God Jesus replied blessed you Simon son of Jonah for this was not revealed to you by by flesh and blood but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Then the order his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. I read you Matthew's, the 16th chapter, starting with the 13th verse to the 20th. May a blessing come to the reader and the hearer of his word. Amen. This morning, my eternal God and Father, just a few of your handmade servants. Lord, we come here, assembling here at this place, at this time, to give homage to a true and a living God. For Father, even before the earth was, Father, you are. And as we go through what we go through now, Father, you still are. And Lord, when this world has come to an end and we went on the howdy howdy, you still will be are. For you are the first, you are the last, you are the beginning, and you are the end. So, Father, we come right here right now today, Father, saying thank you right now. For you are a good God, uh, and there's no other God that is like you. So, Father, we first want to come and say we thank you for this day, Lord, for letting the sun rise high. But, Father, we didn't have to travel in the rain this morning. 
But, Lord, you gave us the Son, the God is Lord. And you also indwelled us with your spirit as we woke up this morning. But, Lord, when we got up, what could have been our cooling board, Father? You touched us with your finger of love. Father, then you lifted us up, Father God. You gave us a reasonable portion of our health and strength. Lord, we want to say thank you right now for each and every one that's here today. Father, come, we come praying, Lord. Thank you for where you carried us from, Lord. All week long up until this very moment. You are a good God, Father. I say you are a mighty good God, Father. Even though I may not have, Father God, you are a good God, Father. Because if I'm still here, Lord Jesus, I know that it's always time. Father God, we thank you for every heart that's here today, Father. Thank you for those who are on the way, Lord Jesus. Ask that you would bring your spirit into this place right now, Father, as we celebrate 78 years, Lord, of service. 78 years, Father, of fellowship. 78 years, Father, of leaning and depending on you. So, Father God, we know that this building would not be nothing, Father, without those who are sitting in the seat, Father. So we thank you for each and every one that's here today, Father. We thank you for everyone that's united with the church, Father. We thank you for those who are here yet to come, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the leadership that you've placed at this place, Father God, because truly you've given us a man after your own heart. Lord, we say thank you right now, Father. So come into this place right now, Father. Lord, we have some that are sick today, Father. Father, we have some that are troubled in spirit, Lord. Lord, we have some that are suffering bereavement today, Father. But we know that, Father, you are a God that heals and cures all things, Father. There's nothing we can go through, Father, that you yourself have not experienced, Father, and you've given us a way of escape. So, Father, we say thank you right now for this time. So, Father God, we say that you will come in and bless the prayed prayers, Father God, bless the preached word, Father God, and the same song, Father. And we'll be careful to give your name all the praises and all the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And one time, one more time, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Ooh, they gave us one of them old school, old school prayers, baby. Did you see it? The kind they used to do back in the old days. Them deacons used to pray, honey. Ooh, Lord, I miss it so much. Ooh, then, then after the prayer, after the prayer, then that choir would always sing. You remember that choir would sing? Ooh, it has such a good flow, everything coming in the church, I tell you. Well, ain't no confusion there. Everybody knows what to do. And Lord, I tell you, that choir show can sing. Come on, child, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Can't you just see that choir singing? I can hear them now. Ooh, that music coming, I hear it now. That choir show can sing, baby. Close your eyes, honey, close your eyes. You see them, close your eyes. Where the music? Ooh, it's coming, it's coming.
Lord. Oh, could you hear him, baby? No. Could you see it? Could you just feel it? Now, don't make you that, don't that choir singing just, just make you feel good on the inside. Mama, forget it. I didn't hear nothing. I'm not going back to that church. Don't act. <laughs> oh, Lord, now that made a man. And yeah, you did? Lord, we need you. We need you. Oh, Lord, that ain't nobody but my hey, good hey, friend, Joe. Hey, hey Joe, Joe, I'm coming, Joe. I'll crash you I'm, I'm coming. You know. Come on, Joe. Crash you oh, Joe, it's good to see you, Joe. So good to see you. What you mean? You see me every day, baby. Oh, it's all right, Joe. Did that miss some service? Did I miss that choir? The choir just sung. They sung about 10 minutes ago. What you say? They sung about 10 minutes ago. Well, what you say? I said they yeah, sung. I heard about what you said. <laughs> Goodness, I heard what you said the well, first time. Well, asked me what they sung. Well, I just sang. Yeah, you asked me what great. you said. Girl, you remember when we was young? Ooh, we used to say. I used to sing, girl. I used to break it down. Woo! We used to sing in that choir, girl. Yo. We used to have it going on, Joe. When the music come on, girl, I thought Let it was you know, the day. There it is, Joe. Joe, now it's your day. Get it, Joe. 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 Get it, Let's go. I think. Come on, take them to the bathroom before they take up this money. I gotta come on back. 
and just tell him thank you. If you're a testimony that God is real and you can testify to the person next to you that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I dare you to lift up holy hands and just tell him thank you. Look at, look at somebody next to you and say, you don't know my story of all God has done for me. Come on, open up of your mouth and give him a great big hand praise all over this place. Come on, give him a praise all over this place. Come on, give him a praise all over this place. I dare somebody lift up, hold a hand, and tell him, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. This is not on the script, but this is always on the script. Let everything that had breath. Maybe your part wasn't written in the script, but you ought to have a praise testimony. If God been good to you, just for yourself in the script and say, he had been too good to me not to tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, y'all sit down if you can sit down if you can hallelujah 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's just something about when you just start thinking about a song that says, I need thee. And then you start thinking about how he done showed up when you called out, I need thee. You, you just can't get up and not say nothing. When you think about all the time you said, I need, and he supplied your need. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh -uh. Y'all cut it out. Shh. That ain't my job today. Y'all cut that out. Cut that out. Shh. That boy's hard headed. God is awesome. He's awesome. Our theme, as you see on the walls, is the family of God doing life together. Just do me a favor and just look around to people that are sitting behind you, sitting on side of you. You might not know their names, but for the next 30 to 45 minutes, you're doing life with them. So tell them, thank you for doing life with me. You, you might not know who's sitting behind you, but tell them, thank you for doing life with me. Because see, while you're sitting there, they may be inspirational and influential in you receiving what God has for you today. Tell them, thank you for doing life for, with me. Because I came to hear a word, and, and I, I don't need your Facebooking. Thank you for doing life with me. I, I don't need you to think about what you're going to eat after church. Thank you for doing life with me. Hallelujah. My, my, my responsibility at this point... Uh, it's our offertorial period. We're not passing trays. At the end of service, when you leave out, that will be a tray that will be there that you may give as you exit out of the sanctuary. We will put up now our text line and our give lify. And we thank God for those of you that desire to sow a seed into this ministry for these 78 years. Now, you saw the skit, and we thank God for the skit because it gave a picture of reality. Amen. COVID calls several individuals to be stuck in homes and some of us got stuck in homes and found ourselves hard to get unstuck yeah. right. amen because we got in the routine and the habit of not getting up going to church on Sunday and boy it just got easier and easier to miss some of us if we be honest we just got halfway unstuck today but I thank God you got unstuck today now uh, this morning as we Acts and we showed the skit of the grandmother and the daughter that left out and they have made their way in the sanctuary. But God saw fit that this morning, not only by skit, but we have a grandmother and a mother that's in the midst this morning that because of life situations, because of COVID, have caused her to not be out much, breathing problems and not being able to be outside of the home but she pressed her way to the sanctuary this morning. And, and, and come on, that's right, that's right. And, and, and Pastor Johnson, they gave a pre-call to the church and say, Pastor, we're, we're coming. We're not gonna be, she's not going to be able to stay long dealing with breathing problems and hadn't been out the house, but don't want to leave without having prayer. So we pause in the service, but we're doing service all at the same time. Amen. So I'm asking the Guillory family would come now with mother who have pressed her way. Have mother made it? Yeah. All right. Who pressed her way to church this morning. Hadn't been out the house. But say, I'm, I'm pressing my way to get to church. See, it, it, this was the skit. This is reality. we could bring mother down I thought she had just came in won't be able to stay long but she pressed her way in we thank God for your mother that she said I want to come by on church anniversary the family of God Sunday I want the prayers of the righteous. Yes, Lord. Amen. 
So I'm going to ask everybody that yet still believe that prayer still works. Hallelujah. That yet believe that there is power in prayer. Bless your name, Jesus. That you would just begin to extend your heart, your arms, and your prayers towards this family. Amen. Amen. Missionary Hebert, I'm asking that you would come. This is the family of God. See, some won't understand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But see, the family of God doesn't have any restrictions. It doesn't have any denomination. Thank you, Jesus. It's just believers. Glory to your name, oh God. And a daughter said, Pastor, Mama coming. She's still dealing with COVID breathing issues. Hadn't been out in public, but she want to come to church this Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. Missionary Hebert, I'm asking if you would just come put your hands on mother. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. I need the oil. church as usual oh God we need to move by your spirit Thank you, Jesus. so master we come now as the family of God Hallelujah. petitioning you on behalf of your child you made her you created her you formed her you put breath in her body. And so now, God, we talk to the creator. Have mercy, oh God. The God, she has made a declaration that I want to get in the house on this Sunday. And God, I believe your word that if we call your answer, I believe your word, God, that you promised that you would be that. I believe your word, God, that there's a woman that touched your hem of your garment and was, I believe your word, God. So now, God, we come. We come as those four that lowered the man down in the presence of Jesus. Some had to roll her in, God. Family is standing around her even now. But by faith. 
we come putting her in your bosom. By faith, God, wrap your loving arms around her. By faith, God, we know you could breathe breath in her nostrils yet again. By faith, God, we know, God, that you could give her strength and peace that surpasses all understanding. By faith, God, we believe, God, that you do all things well. By faith, God. We believe that your son Jesus died and rolled by, by faith, God. We believe that we are more than conquerors. So now, God, I pray for her body, for her mind, for her strength. Yes, God. And then, God, I pray for the caretakers, the loved ones that are surrounding her. Give them strength, God. Yes, when they get fatigued, God, give them strength. Yes, God. When they get weary, God, give them strength. Yes, and now, God, the church comes praying. And God, we pray like the church prayed for Peter. Hallelujah. However, we're not astonished if we hear not. We're praying until we hear not, God. We're praying with expectation, God, that you can, God. We're praying with expectation, God, that you can move, God. We need a move, oh God. We need a move, oh God. And we tell you thank you in advance. Not just for her delivery, but there's yet somebody else, God, that's in the sanctuary that pressed their way to get here. And they're sitting there, God, heart is overflowing, saying, what about me? But I hear your spirit saying, let them know I'm yet still a prayer answering God. I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're going through. I, I know how you had to press your way. And God, you told me to tell them that you're yet in this sanctuary. And by the power of your strength, you can deliver even in the pew. You can heal even in the pew. You can make a way even in the pew. So don't get weary that your name wasn't called. Don't get weary that nobody knows your story. God said, I know. So God, we tell you, thank you. It is done. It is so. Because you said so. Even now, whatsoever thou would ask of God, God will give it thee. So we tell you, thank you. In the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. And they all said amen. Come on, let's give God a great big hand. Praise all over this place. Hallelujah. 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 Can we celebrate this family as they go back to their seats? Come on. Celebrate this family. Celebrate this family. Celebrate this family. Celebrate this family. Nah. Nah. The, the reason why this is a family reunion, I told you she ain't been out the house. So some of the family hadn't seen her. So they taking advantage of making a family reunion right here. Isn't that what church ought to be? Amen. So the family can encourage one another. Come on, one more time. Celebrate this family. Well, here's what we believe. We believe that blessings are flowing. We believe that blessings are flowing. We believe that God is yet still in the blessing business. Look at somebody saying, bless me. Oh, look at somebody else say, bless me. Look at somebody. I need you to yell to somebody like you really mean and tell them, bless me. Now, I, need, I need somebody to move and somebody to tell somebody, bless me. Come on, let's give God a great big hand praise. Say, bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me. And if you need God to bless you, I dare you to open up your mouth and say, God, even now, bless me. Come on. Grandma, the youth about to sing. Can I go sing? Yeah, baby, go on up there and sing. They ain't going to stop okay, you. Name, you sure? Yeah, you I'm sure you know that song. Go up there and help her. You sure? It'll be all right. Girl, I said go now. Bless me, bless me, bless me, God in me. Death has been defeated, he is our victory. Bless me, bless me, God, not just for me, 
but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Bless me, bless me, bless me, God, and he. Death has been defeated, he is our victory. Bless me, bless me, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Favor, favor, let it follow me till I'm the conversation of all my enemies. Favor, favor, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Favor, favor, let it follow me till I'm the conversation of all my enemies. Favor, favor, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Bless me, bless me, bless me, God, and he. Death has been defeated, he is our victory. Bless me, bless me, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. God indeed. Death has been defeated. He is our victory. Bless me, bless me, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need.
give God a great big hand praise. We thank God for our skit. I hope you understood that the skit was just suggesting that God can do anything with the family. Amen. I want to give encouragement to all families that are here that God yet still can move. We thank God for our skit, our director and sister Bobby Yarbrough. Stand up, Sister Yarbrough. Sister Brianna Blacknell, stand up. That's the mother that got a little wayward, but she got her way back. Hallelujah. Old Joe, Brother Marcus, stand up, Old Joe. And that granddaughter that got had an encounter with the Lord after she got off TikTok, Miss Braylon. We thank God for all the personalities, all that are here thus far. We're excited. We have a great man of God to come and share a word with us. Uh, that's a marriage station on, and so we're excited. Now, I uh, hear tell this is his first time preaching here at the True Vine Church, so we dare not uh, let him come to True Vine back to Barrett Station, and we don't give him a True Vine welcome. So, so listen, I got to do it how we do it at the True Vine Church. So give me one second. Let me get into character. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and my pleasure to introduce the psalm and present the others, the speaker of the hour here at the True Vine Missionary Baptist Church. He is proud from the Barrett Station area. He pastored the Church of the Mount Calvary Church in Houston, Texas. He is none other than Dr. Maurice Johnson. Stand on your feet, put your hands together for our speaker of the hour. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. I am so delighted to be here. Uh, I've been to this church a whole bunch of times uh, for homegoing celebrations. And uh, as a child, I, was, I grew up a Catholic in this church. Any, I mean, in this community. Anybody that knows me know I was a Catholic for about 32 years of my life. But then when I went to Vietnam and came back, I was messed up. I started doing a whole lot of stupid, crazy, dumb things, and then God says, I got to save you because I have a work for you. I didn't realize it took me 12 years to get my act together, but I thank God. Amen. And I thank God that he does not give up on us. Amen. I bring you greetings from the Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, 1018 Herkimer Street. Uh, where Dr. Maurice A. Johnson is my pastor. See, y'all missed that one. <laughs> y'all missed that one. I am so glad to be here. Uh, when I was thinking about and praying, what would I preach about? And I had a chance to talk to uh, Pastor Carter a few days ago. And he made a statement to me and asked a question. And I said, I don't know. I'm just going to let God lead me. Then I looked at the theme uh, that was uh, in the uh, text message that I got received from him. And it says, the legacy continues. And then I asked God, I said, Lord, how can I use his theme but Use the scriptures that you put in my heart to share. And then this bulb went off, that purple light, red light, yellow light, and said, he's saying the legacy continues. Tell the people to keep the legacy going. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he just said, keep the legacy going. God bless you. God keep you. Oh, gracious Father, we come right now. First of all, Lord, we just want to thank you for this opportunity. We want to thank you for uh, our last night lying down, our early morning rise this morning. Thank you for dressing us in our right minds, giving us the exercise of our limbs. Lord, we ask right now that you would open the eyes, the ears, the hearts, and the minds of those that would have an ear to hear. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. 
Somebody ought to say amen. amen. I am uh, a messed up kid in a sense. Barrett Station was a community that I talk about everywhere I go. I am proud of my heritage and my legacy, my family, uh, and the people when I was a child growing up in the 50s and the 60s. And it took a village to raise children. We stopped. We stopped that tradition. We stopped telling our children how hard it was for us. Right. I grew up, and when I say this to people, they look at me like I'm crazy, but I didn't eat preserves out of jars from gro uh, shelves in grocery stores until I was 18 years old. I grew up eating homemade preserves, Amen. pears, peaches, figs. Uh, the, the syrup that I ate was syrup that a, a nephew of my dad is in Louisiana uh, would make it from sugar cane and he would call my dad and say, y'all can come down and get some syrup. Come on, help me here. I had an aunt in Mount Bellevue named uh, Ida, but everybody called her owner. She would take muscadine grapes and make wine and Amen. give wine to a gallon of wine to every one of her nieces and nephews. Uh, and I'm, if you uh, didn't raise it or grow it, you didn't eat it. Amen. You know, I grew up where when you killed a hog, everybody had meat. Everybody. Come on, help me here. I had an uncle that worked on a dairy farm in, in uh, Dayton, Texas, and when they had a bull, and because he was the favorite white man's black man, he had first dibs, come on, help me here, somebody, Amen. on a cow. they bring that cow home and feed it corn for six months and then slaughter it, and now I know why everybody had freezers in the house. Yeah. Come on, help me here. Y'all missed that. I, uh, my dad, right there by the Singletons where I grew up, they had a, a piece of land that was almost an acre. Well, at the age of seven, eight years old, I was towing the row. Oh, somebody will pick that one up. In other words, I was making rows so we could make and raise corn and, and uh, okra and potatoes. I mean, not potatoes, tomatoes and uh, peppers. We did uh, uh, green beans, green peas, should I say. We did squash. Come on, help me here. And every now and then, we'd get a good watermelon. Oh, y'all missed that one. So, so, so when I talk about where I come from, I say it in such an humble way where I know that God has been good to me. I've been blessed uh, over the years. I made a lot of mistakes. I did things that I regret. I did things that I've asked God to continue to forgive me for. But I know that God is able. Amen. There's a scripture in Psalms, the 36th number of Psalms that I want to get started with and if you if you will just indulge me for a few minutes it'll be we'll get there we'll get where we need to go uh, but what I love about how God operates with us I guess I ought to put that other pair of eyes on uh, what I love about how God operates with us he never gives up he's yet to quit on us we're the ones that quit on him my backdrop Scripture is going to come out of Psalms 36 and 10. O oh, continue thou loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thou righteousness to the upright in heart. You may be seated. That's just my background scripture. And when I looked up the word continue, Continues a word that says, I'm going to pursue. It's, it's, a, it's a word that says, I'm not going to quit. It's a word that says, nothing is going to stop me. It's a word that says, if I don't stay on this road, then I know I'm going to get in some more trouble. It's a word that encourages us to continue in brotherly love. It's a word that tells us, that we need to study the word of God to show ourselves approved unto him. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What I share with people, God don't care where you came from, but he cares about where you are right now. And you see, when you walk in his favor, when you walk in this unmerited favor that he gives to all of us, we find ourselves sometimes wondering when God won't answer a prayer 
when we want it answered. But I found out through all of my trials and tribulations that God is waiting on us to make a decision to show evidence of my faith in him. He wants us to know that he ain't going nowhere until I let him know, not with my words, but with my walk, with my conversation, with the actions of things that I do. David writes in Psalms, that sixth verse, he says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, for I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But I found out that that verse won't work for me if the first five verses are not guiding and directing me and I'm walking by faith. Paul writes in Hebrews, he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. God wants to see our faith, not hear it. Come on, help me here. Well, if I, if I really mix up this vegetables that I'm bringing out of the garden, come on, help me here. I, I got to go to that verse that says, Seek ye the kingdom of God first and its righteousness, and all, not some, all of these things will be added unto you. You read a couple of more verses there, and it says, If I do what I do for the fowl of the air, how much more are you? But you see, when I learned how to pray, when I left the Catholic Church 40-something years ago, when I accepted the call to preach and didn't know what I was getting myself into, and folk was shouting around me, old people was praying for me because they saw a young man that was lost, a young man that was confused. But the sad part about it is I was like so many folk. I grew up in the church. My daddy was a Catholic, but he had a Baptist background. Every Sunday at 5 o'clock in the evening, he would read 10 to 12 verses out of the Bible, and then he would take one scripture and say, Now, I want you to memorize this scripture because next Sunday I'm going to ask you what does that verse mean to you. So it wasn't that I didn't have word being put in. It wasn't that that I didn't know who God was. But you see, I do like so many of us, we choose to walk away so that we can live our lives. I, 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 I heard a preacher a long time ago preach the message and he called it, I'm drugged like my mom and daddy. Come on, help me here. They drug me to Sunday school. They drug me to Bible study. They drug me to teacher's meeting. They, come on, help me here, somebody. Come on, help me here. And when we got old enough, we decided I had enough church. It's time for me. But I found out the hard way that when you make that choice, when you make that decision, oh, Lord, you really don't know the road that you put yourself on. Yeah, I still went to church. I gave my money like I was supposed to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I didn't follow those teachings. I didn't follow those scriptures. And you know, I thought I was a good person because I was always doing things to help folk. Pick up folk and give them a ride. Take someone old to the grocery store. Try to hand me a couple of dollars for some gas. And I said, no, ma'am, I can't take your money. My daddy would beat the hell out of me. And I'd miss my blessing. But I was still confused. I was still messed up. I was still making choices that were not beneficiary to me, but beneficiary to the enemy. And see, what I found out about the enemy, that there's another scripture in the Bible that says he comes for three reasons. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But you see, I found out in Cain to the conclusion one day that he could only steal, kill, and destroy what I allowed him to kill, steal, and destroy. So I had to learn first how to get him out of my head. I had to learn second how to get him out of my heart. And then I had to learn how to replace all of those emotions and feelings and desires with the power of the Word of God. And, 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 and as I got older and the more I preached, I realized that I was blessed and had favor when I didn't deserve it. Five times in Vietnam, I should have died. I had two heart attacks. I've had three heart attacks. I've had cancer twice. 
I had two strokes, had a stroke less than four months ago and take no pharmaceutical drugs. I just stopped by to tell you that I know a God. He don't just say he's able. People look at me and say, you don't look like you've been that sick. I say, because I serve God. Oh, you ain't telling me the truth about your medicine. I say, I serve God. I say, I found out that God does not try to do anything. He just does it. In Romans, Paul says, I am persuaded that there's nothing in this life, come on, set me, that will separate me from the love of God. Can I stop here for a moment? When Jesus was baptized on the river Jordan, and the Spirit says, I mean, the Word of God says, as soon as he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came to him and led him into the wilderness. Well, and then in Hebrews it says we have a high priest who was tempted in all points as we were, but yet without sin. And I'm trying to figure this out because they said when he was a child and he spoke in the synagogue, they say he grew in wisdom. And I'm going, wait a minute, this don't sound like what I've been reading that he needed to grow because he was already supposed to be. But what I came to the conclusion is that the flesh is our worst enemy. You see, it wasn't his head that needed to grow. It wasn't his spirit that was in him that needed to grow. But it was the flesh that he was how that all of these things were housed in that needed to grow. Oh, y'all missed that one. I guess I'm the only Negro in the room that had to fight the flesh to get where God wanted me to be. But that's all right. You don't have to say amen. I'm going to sound like a preacher from Tulsa, I mean from uh, uh, Tyler, Texas. He always says, uh, don't look down because you're going to make me think I'm talking to you. Come on, help me hear somebody. But when I realized that in order for us to be where God wants us to be, there's something that we have to continue. Come on, help me here. We have to continue daily in his word. David writes, it says, his delight. So I found out that if I'm not delighted in getting into God's word, then I'm going to be in trouble because being delighted in his word based on that word in the Bible, it says I'm excited. I'm motivated. I can't wait to hear what God has got to say to me. So David says, but my delight, now he used the word his, come on, help me here, but I want to, can I paraphrase just a little bit? My delight, but he says, my delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law do I meditate day and night. See, it sounds like somebody been preaching and teaching y'all. But the sad part about it is the more we preach and teach, the less sometimes some of us will take it and apply it to our lives. Can I stop right here just for a moment? Too often, we in other people's business. There was a song that came out a long time ago. There's a scripture in the Bible that warns us about being busybodies. But the song says, stop sweeping in front of my door. And start sweeping. And start sweeping in front of your door. Well, you see, I found out that if I'm going to take up some of the mentality that David had in his relationship with God. Oh, can I stop here for a second? David also in Psalms 51 says, I and I alone, Lord, committed this iniquity in thy sight. I got to tell you something, so if you don't want to hear it, plug your ears up. Stop blaming everybody else for what goes wrong in your life and take, be responsible and accountable for your actions or for your inaction. Come on, help me here. Now, this might be the last time. Some of y'all might tell Pastor Carter, don't invite that Negro back over here. And that's all right, too, because I've been blessed by God for the last 23 years to preach and teach all over this country. 
And I'm so glad that when I finish saying what I'm saying, I know I got some folk at 1018 Herkimer Street waiting for me to come back home. Come on, help me here. And if I'm gone too long and they find out I'm out of town, I'm going to get a phone call, Pastor. I don't know where you are, but you know you got people waiting on you. Come on, help me here. But I learned something about preaching. I learned something about teaching that if I can't, if I'm not living it, then there's very little meaning to what I say. But go back to David in Psalms 1. But look what the scripture does for us. It tells us about being blessed before we get the instructions to follow God. Now, now, now sometimes he'll put it in front and then sometimes he'll put it way back. He'll drop it down 10 or 15 verses. But what I love about God is that he has one purpose. He has one plan. He has one focus for you and I. And that is to do what's necessary without turning us into robots, what he wants from us. When I learned what he wanted from us, and what I real, when I realized that I didn't have the kind of knowledge because I spent 32 years of my life in a Catholic church. So I educated myself. I went to school, and one of the schools I went to, I didn't like it because they were teaching me how to preach and not teaching me how to find God. So when I realized that what I needed before I needed anything else, I needed instructions on how to find and locate and hold on to God. Can I stop here just for a second? I'm so glad that in Joshua 1 and 8, he wrote very similar words, but he approached his uh, declaration a, a little different. He said, do not let the law of this book depart from thy mouth. Meditate on it day and night. But then he stops for a second and pauses and says, observe to do all that's written therein. And then, and this is where we mess it up. This is the blessing. You shall have prosperity and good success. So what we look for is, let me open my Bible up. I'm going to read some, because somewhere I heard a preacher say, come on, help me here, that if I meditate, but then you see, we forget the part of meditation based on the fact he says, day. Then he tells us to do something else. He says, pray without. Oh, y'all got that. I see somebody been, somebody been listening to the preacher. Well, what I'm getting at is in order to keep the legacy going, you got to understand the legacy and what's required to keep it going. Come on, help me here. He goes on to say we will be like a tree planted by the rivers. Now, 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 I, I, I got to stop here for a second because he did say rivers, so he made it plural. He didn't identify how many rivers, but he said rivers. So that means that whatever I need, to be where God want me to be, I will get my substance from the dirt that I decide to plant my feet. Come on, help me hear somebody. He says, your leaves will not wither. He says, you will bring forth fruit. Now, hold on, hold on. But you see, sometimes we want the fruit before we do the work. I found out my mother had a big fig tree behind the house. And back in those days, they had those big concrete scepter tanks. And then they had those concrete pipes with gravel and all that water and waste would flow out in the backyard. And you had the greenest black yard, backyard you could ever see. Come on, help me here. But what I did one day, I went and pulled some of the big figs off of that tree. And I would watch my mama. She would take them and she'd put them in the windowsill 
where the sun would rise. And she'd open up the curtain so that the sun could come in. Oh, come on, help me here. In a couple of days, they would be ripe enough to eat. I did that one day. But my mama got mad at me because I didn't put them in the windowsill in the kitchen. I put them in the windowsill in my bedroom. Come on, help me here. The sun didn't hit it the way it needed to. I got so busy being bad, I forgot about the fix. My mother smelt this odor coming out of the bedroom that I slept in. And she started moving stuff around. She took it and put it on a plate. She put it up on the table, waited till I came home from school, and she said, what is this? Y'all will get this somewhere. And I looked at it, and I said, I don't know, Mama. <laughs> she said, wait until your daddy get home. Well, I heard him change my story. Come on, help me here. What I'm getting at is, is that sometimes we see something we want and then we do what we think we need to do or we do what somebody else did or we do what somebody else told us to do or we do something because somebody told you how to do it and if you wanted it real fast, this is how it would work. Well, I found out that that don't work. And then after my daddy whipped me, he reminded me, son, stop listening to other folk. You saw your mama do something, but she knew what figs to pull off the tree. Come on, help me here. I ain't got no words, so I can't talk about God. I got to learn how to pick all of the fruit, not the fruit that make me feel good. You see, see, I can't preach you happy, but I can tell you what will make you happy. And then I don't want to make you happy, but I want joy to flow. Because you see, I found out when you have unspeakable joy, then happiness doesn't mean anything because happiness is a word that human beings take it for granted. We use that word too often like we say, I love you. I tell people when, when my grandkids or somebody tell me that they love me, I don't generally respond. And the reason why is because love, real love, does not need to hear that I love you this much more. Oh, y'all missed that one. See, love has got everything to do with it. And if I'm going to stand on the word love, then I got to know where God says love ends and begins. And you see, with God, there's no end. And there's no beginning. He just loves us in spite of ourselves. Godly love is not envious. Godly love is not jealous. Godly love is kind. Godly love is considerate. Godly love is forgiving. Godly love does not need to be reminded that I love you too. See, agape love and phileo love Phileo is just brotherly. In other words, somebody tell me they love me, the natural response is say, I love you too. Okay? But then what I found out about the word of God is it tells us that we should and must show love. See, I thought, I thought, I'd, get, I thought I'd get a couple of more. I thought I would get a... I thought I would, I thought I would but... I, 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 I thought I would, but... But 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 I thought I would, but it didn't it didn't happen. I'm gonna I gotta get to a couple of scriptures and I'm about to close and I hope that you get something that you can take home and when you go home you got something to think about. But I'm so glad that I serve a God that doesn't look at my faults. I'm so glad that I serve a God that forgives my sins. I, I'm so glad that I serve a God that at the end of the day, he looked at everything that I did wrong and he says, I will take these sins and I will throw them away and I will remember them no longer. What happens to love when you, you and your husband is in an argument and the wife or the husband says, well, at least I didn't do that. Yeah. It ain't got nothing to do with the argument right now. Uh-oh. Ain't got nothing to do with this argument. 
But at least I didn't do that. Oh, y'all missed that. I, I, I thought, I thought, I, I, I really thought that, that I would hear something. Let brotherly love continue. If you're going to continue the legacy, the love of God has to be in your heart. And if that love is not present in your heart, then you will not be where God wants you to be. The enemy will make you think that you're all right, but you will find out, why am I still going through this? I, I've heard this a thousand times, and I've probably said it 10,000 times. Why am I going through this? I'm not that bad. I'm a good person. So when we fail in that particular entity in Hebrews 13 and 1, then we put ourselves in jeopardy because our declaration is not true. Our proclamation is not true. Because we, without love, none of it works. You can have all the knowledge in the world. You can quote a Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You can know that it took 1,500 years, 35 different men to put everything together inspired by God and know it word for word, but love is not a part of that equation, then you're in trouble. The Bible says that we need to be rooted, grounded, established in the word of God. And if I'm rooted, grounded, established in his word, then I'm going to be all right. In Psalms 25, uh, the writer there does something for us. He reminds us of a relationship that we need to maintain with God. And when we maintain that relationship properly, we are ready to be taught the word of God. 25 and 4 says, Show me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Can I stop here for a moment? He says, acknowledge me in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Come on, help me here. He'll be a light and a lamp. So I don't have to worry about all of the boogeyman noises to my left or my right. I don't have to worry about what's behind me because he says, I am a lamp unto thy feet. So that means that all I got to do is follow the light. Can I stop here? Jesus says, and quotes this verse, I am the light of the world. So if I want to come out of my darkness, and some of us hide our darkness real well. And, and can I say something real quick? I learned at an early age how to hide my darkness. I was doing things that nobody knew about. I had an attitude about things that very few people understood. But you see, when I learned how to be bad, When I learned how to be bad, I learned well. I tell people sometimes that when I was in that mode, when I was in that segment of my life, I, had, I was teaching other people how to be bad like me. Y'all will pick that up somewhere. The next verse, that fifth verse says, Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation, and thee do I wait all the day long. In other words, I'm waiting on you, Lord. But while I'm waiting, what am I doing? Come on, help me here. Am I doing anything for God? Am I doing anything to show God who I am, where I came from, and where I'm headed? Am I doing anything that God will look at me and say, you know what? I need to give you a little more help. I need to give you a little more power. And it's not that I got, I got what I need because when he poured his spirit and his faith, he gave us a measure of faith. That was enough to get us through anything that he was going to allow in our lives. See, we missed that part. He says, I pour out a measure of faith. He says, I pour out my spirit on all flesh. And then we forget that when God made us, he made us and fashioned us in his image. Uh-oh. But you see, when it gets too hard, when it gets where we can't deal with it, 
then we want to throw the towel in. Or we'll say, God, where are you? Y'all know the story about the footprints in the sand, right? Well, I found out and learned a long time ago. I'd be looking for footsteps, him walking with me, and I didn't see him. And then I go, well, that's right, fool. He carrying you right now. I hope y'all got that. I, I, I'm almost through. In that same, in that same, in that same uh, number of Psalms, that sixth verse says, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. I, I'm so glad that I let the Spirit of God teach me. I, I, I had an old deacon that uh, God put in my life just for one year. And that one year, five days a week, every day like clockwood, clockwork, he would show up at my job and come in and sit with me after I'm supposed to be off and talk to me about the word of God and would give me assignments. That deacon is no longer with us, but that deacon, before he died, I got a chance to say to him, I thank God that your wife told you about me and that when I rejected it in the beginning, you stayed with me. And then when I say, I don't know what he is to you, but to me, he's my all in all. I, 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 he's the rose of Sharon for me. He's the lily in my valley. He's the light in dark places. He's my hope for everlasting. And I know that hope is a promise because he tells us in hope that faith starts right now. I can't see the evidence of the results of my faith or my hope in you. But he says, if I love you, I will care for you. If I say I love you, I will heal you. He says, if I love you, I will take care of you. He says he'll open doors that need to be open. He'll close doors that need to be closed in our lives. But if we're not connected to him, then we won't know that he just closed the door that you wanted open, but he said it needed to be closed. He is my deliverer. He is the beginning and the end. He's my alpha and my omega. He is my all in all. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, I'd be dead. And I have living proof that had he not been there, I'd be in my grave. I thank God for the God that he is. I'm almost done. I got one more. I got one more verse that I need to share with you. And then I will be done. The meek will be guided in judgment. And the meek, he teach his way. I had to learn how to come off of a high horse that I was on. Because I believe that anything that I wanted to do, I could do it if I put the work in. But I realized that I put work in things that God didn't want for me. And it's, I'm obligated by the word of God, by my relationship with God, to tell somebody that it's not about you. It's not about your husband. It's not about your wife. It's not about your children. It's not about your mama. It's not about daddy. It's not about grandma. It ain't about grandpa, but it's about you and God. And when we get lined up with God, then you can quote these ver this verse and say it with power and authority. Them that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Come on, help me here. They shall mount up wings as an eagle. They shall run. They shall walk. I'm so glad that somebody know it, but I found out that we got to live by those words. See, God is not going to give us what we want when we want it, but he's going to give it when he knows we are ready for it. God is not going to bless you the way you want to be blessed on your job, with your finances, in your house or wherever it is, until you convince God that you're ready for this blessing. I'm at a historical church. It was founded May the 20th, 19 and 20. We celebrated 102 years of existence and 100 years at one location. 
In the blessed part, it's only had three pastors. One stayed 37. The second one stayed uh, 35. And I've been there 30. And there was a vacant spot in between, a little void in between each area. But when I look at the goodness of God, when I look with God and I see God doing things for others, not just for me. See, you, you need to see somebody else going through a terrible trial but still waiting on God. And while they're waiting on God, they're not sitting on their can, but they are involved in the kingdom building process. I close with these words. I know that sometimes we don't really understand, but the real work is not in the building. The real work is out there. Go ye therefore into the uttermost parts of the world. Teach them. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When I look at one of my favorite verses, let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. But I can't stay any longer because my time down here is over. Come on, help me here. And then I, I remember another writer writes and says, you will do a greater work than I. And I said to myself, how are we going to do a greater work than Christ is because he's going to give us more time to do more work. So if I go, I will come back. I'm going to leave it there. I'm so glad that God gave me a Savior. I can't speak for nobody else. But I'm so glad that God gave me a Savior who went to Calvary. I'm so glad that that young man that went to Calvary, he was thinking about me, a wretch undone. I was on my way to hell. Come on, help me here. Uh, old folk would say, too mean to, no, too mean to die. That's what I heard. You're too mean to die. And, and that's bad when you... Everybody in this room knows somebody that they say is mean as hell. Everybody. There's at least one person that you know. And sometimes when they get real ugly, you be asking God. But see, Jesus went to Calvary. But I found out he didn't just go for me. I, I found out that he went for everybody that was waiting on an opportunity to be saved. Uh, they, they mentioned something uh, in the skit when they talked about uh, in the prayer and in, in the skit where they talked about the four men. Well, the man on the bed didn't get any credit for anything. But Jesus looked at them and said because of their faith. See, so if your faith is working in somebody else's life. Then God, and you are trusting God for somebody that's having trouble in their relationship with God because he's not answering the prayer the way you want it. Well, I just want to let you know that when you got somebody in intercessory prayer and they know God and they done been through a few storms and they understand that them that wait on the Lord shall... Come on, help me here. It's not that he ain't, but he's waiting for your faith to kick in. And when your faith kicks in, I found out that where we go first matters. And too often, we'll run to people before we go to God. And if just by possibility that we go to God first is weak, because we are crying and we're telling God what somebody told us that was wrong with us. When I found out that I had colon cancer, I had a cousin that was married to my first cousin. She was a barber. Her name was Connie. And I went to her. She was cutting my hair. And she saw me. She said, Maurice, what's wrong with you? I said, well, I found out that I got cancer. Her son heard this conversation. I'm talking about a 12-year-old kid. He heard that conversation. You know how grown folk tell kids. 
get out of the room. We ain't this grown folk conversation. And he kept saying, no, mama, I got something I need to say. And I said, okay, fine, get it out. Let him say it. He said, Pastor Johnson, you was at our church three weeks ago telling us young folk how to trust God. You know what that kid said to me? Knock me to my knees. He said, where is your faith? I fell on my knees. I begged God to forgive me. And I went on with victory. I had surgery. They got the cancer. But it hadn't spread. It was about the size of a silver dollar. Inside of my colon, they cut. That's all they cut out. I didn't have to have radiation treatment. Didn't have to have chemo therapy. God got it before. But I thought about, and I tell people all the time: if you say you believe in God, then just wait on Him. But find something to do for Him. Christ went to the cross that we would have a right to the tree of everlasting life. He hung from the sixth to the ninth hour, dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder, but before he died, they pierced him in his side. Blood and water came streaming down. But I'm so glad before he died, he said, Father, it is finished. They took him down, put him in a borrowed tomb, stayed there for three long days, but early, early Sunday morning, he got up, with all power. I believe he is my Lord and my Savior. I found out that he can't be my Savior if he's not my Lord. So I claim him wherever I go as my Lord and my Savior. And then when I need favor, I can look up to heaven and say, Father, don't forsake me. Don't leave me. Let me hold on to your unchanging hand. And then he works it out. I'm so glad those that meant it from a bad, God turned it in something good. I'm so glad that he got up for me. I can't speak for nobody in the room, but for me, his word is very true. If you meditate, he will. If you walk, in his walk, he will. If you teach his teachings, he will. If you tell the world about a Savior that died on Calvary, he will. Woke up, dead folk, open, blinded eyes, unstopped, plugged up ears, healed of all kinds of diseases even at a well told a woman she didn't even know about how she was living and after that she became one of the closest disciples that walked with him what I'm saying the only thing that will connect you so that you can keep the legacy going is get connected to the most high God. Hold on. Hold up and hold out. Hold on to the bloodstained banner. Come on, somebody. Hold up and hold out. He will. I say he will. When you really need him, he will show up. He's a God of his word so I thank him for Genesis to Revelation when I look at Jude in one chapter that 24th verse and I'm so glad that I have an advocate sitting at the right hand of the most high God that when I leave this world he's able he's able to present me faultless with exceeding joy. I'm so glad that I serve a God that don't look at what I am or what I was, but what my potential is. And if I get on the road, run my race, stay in my lane, 
he will deliver you. I don't know about nobody else, but I found out he is my all in all. He is the lily of my valley. He is everything that I need to live in this life. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up. Didn't he get up? Hopefully, some of the words that I've shared out of Psalms 36, Psalms 25, Joshua 1 and 8, David, Psalms 1 through 3. I hope that Psalms 26 will hold you up. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. For I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He is my shepherd, making me to lie down in green pastures, leading me beside still waters, saves me for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil because his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Every now and then, he sets me down in the presence of my enemies. But I'm so glad my head is anointed with his oil. My cup runneth over. I may not have everything that I want in this life, but the one thing that I'm going to hold on to is his unchanging hand, his word that will last from everlasting to everlasting. Keep continuing in the legacy. Hallelujah. Keep continuing in the legacy. Now here, here's the question that all of us must answer individually. What am I doing my part? So here now we extend this privilege. The legacy is the word of God. And that word of God that Pastor just shared with us shall stand and last forever. Everything else might go, but the word still works. So today I want to invite you to come join not the church, but the family of God. Because you might be sitting there saying, well, Pastor, I heard Pastor Johnson, and I have allowed, I have chosen, as he shared in the word, I have chosen that life disconnect me from the legacy. I've been living off fear, opposite of faith. I've been living off worry, opposite of worship. And I've let circumstances disconnect me from the legacy. So this is what he says in his word, the day you hear my voice, don't make that choice again. So if you know that's you, say, preacher, that, that's me. I, I'm, not, it's, it, I'm not just inviting you to join True Vine, but I, listen, however, it's a good day on our celebration of birthday for you to come back home. But you might be here with Mount Calvary and say, well, I came to support Pastor Johnson. I need to come back to the family of God. If you're here while we get ready to sing, 
Our ministers and our deacons are standing. All you have to do is stand up and make a walk. Somebody will meet you right where you are. Don't leave here the same way you came in. Today, the word has been spoken. Are you going to continue the legacy? So here now, as we begin to sing, this is what I want you to do. I want you to stand up, step out, and someone will meet you right where you are. Do me a favor. Look to your neighbor on your left or your right. Grab somebody by the hand. If they're uncomfortable, grab them by the hand. Dap them up. Look at them. Smile. Smile face to face. Look at them. Say, hey, neighbor. Oh, make sure you talk to somebody. Say, hey, neighbor. Thank you for doing life with me. Say, can I ask you some questions? Say, neighbor, number one, are you saved? If they say yes, high five them. Say, hallelujah. If they say no, say, neighbor, do you want to be saved? Today is a good day. I'll walk down the aisle with you. Say, neighbor, I got one more question. Say, neighbor, do you have a church home that you're active in? If they say yes, high five them. Say, hallelujah. If they say no, say, well, neighbor, listen, I got a good one for you. I'll walk with you. You ain't got to walk by yourself. So here we begin to sing. Don't leave your neighbor by themselves. If they move, we'll move with them. Walk with them as we just declare, I need you. I need you. I need you to survive. I need you. You need me. You need me. We all, we're all a part of God. Stand with me. Agree with me. Agree with me. We're all, we're all a part. Of God, by it is His will that every need, that every need be. You are important. You are important. I need you. I need you to survive. You are important to me. You are important. I need you. I need. I pray for you, I pray you pray for me, I love you, I need you, I won't harm you, with words from my mouth, I love you, I need you, I pray for you, you pray for me. my mouth. Thank you, brothers. I love you. I need. It is his will. It is his will. That every need. You important to me. Elena, you important to me. Oh, you are important to me. I need you. One more time. You are important. You are important. I need you. One more time. You are important. You are you are important. I need you. I had them keep singing that for a few more times, but I was looking around and I just wanted to lock eyes with a couple of people. Just so I can say you're important to me. And I need you to survive. We continue the legacy standing on the word of God. This church was founded on family. You read the cornerstone, it lists families, the white families. Then there's other families that have come through, the Fondo and the Bundich and the Jacks and Armstrongs and a bears and bears and all families, Williams, all families that have built this church. But it's not just the four walls. The church must be inside. And when we stand on that word of God, that's how we continue the legacy. Come on, let's celebrate our speaker, Pastor Maurice Johnson. 
Amen. Amen. 78 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some churches can't stand for 78 days. And God has allowed this historic church to stay for 78 years. I think Pastor Johnson, as he said, the Mount Calvary Church, 102, is a historical church of reaching a century and plus two years. We thank God. Well, we just declare we're historical as well at 78. We ain't hit a century yet, but we're doing some historical things around here. And so we just thank God for each and every one of you. Now, listen, this year we did not ask any special monetary gift. We're just doing some family gifts. So whatever your family gift is, if you want to give it electronically, again, you see there now, our Givelify and our text to give, just text that word give to that number, or go Givelify True Vine, and you can give your family gift. I shout out all of the families right now. If I didn't call your family, don't, don't be upset with me. I didn't call my own family because, you know what, I'm just a part of the family of God. So if I didn't call out your family, don't, don't, don't be offended. We didn't call out amounts of families. Listen, if your family came together and gave a dollar, praise the Lord. That's what your family gave. And we thank God for that dollar. Praise the Lord. So whatever you give, the word says, give not being a grudgingly or of necessity. For the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. So as you're giving, as you're leading out, our officers will be there. If you have monetary cash donations you want to give, you can give them after you exit out of the door. Now listen, you can't have a family reunion without having some food. Let me say it again. Don't call me for no family reunion. All we're going to do is sit there and look at one another. All right, some of y'all don't want to be real. You know you ain't going if you done sent your $25. You want your T-shirt and your food when you got there. And your T-shirt better be your right size. And you want to know making sure that ain't Betty Cook and not ain't Lucille. Because everybody so ain't Lucille ain't that clean. Oh, did I say that to Mike? Lord have mercy. <laughs> so you know you want to make sure some food is there. So listen, I got good news for you. We got food that's here. And it's for all of you. So please, at the conclusion of service, stand up, go through the door on my right to the Murtha Purpose Room. We have food over there for you, for you to dine. You can sit down and eat. You can hit it to go, whatever you want to do. But we have something over there for you. Now, listen, this is, this is a church family reunion, so it ain't for you to get full. It's just to wet your palate so you can get on to your next place. So don't get over there waiting for steak, potatoes, ribs, and all that. Don't do all that. Just go over there and wet your palate. But, somebody say but. Oh, I need somebody to say, but, a little bit louder. But. If you want to get towed down, come on Saturday at Riley Chambers Park for the church picnic. We got a rib contest. We got a domino game contest. We got a volleyball game. We got a kick. If you want to get towed down, today we just wet your palate. Next week, we got a rib competition. And I'm talking about whoever ribs ain't right. I'm just telling you right now. If your ribs ain't right, I'm talking about you. <laughs> Deacon Bunnage, don't. I'm, I'm telling you head start. Don't you bring nothing because I'm going to talk about you. Don't, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if, 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 if they told me if you bring something, you bought it anyway. So don't you, don't. <laughs> he'll come up with a pan and know it's bought. <laughs> but listen, come on. Everybody's invited. Look, look at somebody next to you and say, everybody. <laughs> See, when you showed up today, you part of our family. So when you showed up today, we want to feed you on Saturday. How much does it cost, Pastor? Your lips. What do I got to pay? Show up. Y'all didn't hear me? Now, do me this favor. Don't have these men and these ladies show, waking up 8 o'clock, 6 o'clock that morning to get five pits going. How many slabs of ribs? 15 slabs of ribs, some sausage that, that you'll slap somebody with. Don't have nobody waking up early to go get all that done. Um, uh, DJ Mike D going to be in the place. His shirt going to be a little tight, so don't y'all talk about the DJ. It, it, that middle button going to be, it, it's, it's, oh, I'm sorry, his wife here. I can't say that out loud. But it, 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 if, if he breathe too hard, that middle button might hit some. But DJ Mike going to be here, and we going to have a good time on Saturday, so y'all come on. We'll be in the park, Riley Chambers, 8 o'clock until. So that so the day just to wet your palate. Mount Calvary, y'all family now. So if y'all want to show up on Saturday, come on. Come on and eat with us. All right? Look at somebody say, Saturday is going down. Riley Chambers Park, 808 and a half. 808 and a half, Magnolia. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. 
That's my last announcement. God loves you. I want to thank God. Uh, our oldest member is unable to be here at the age of 95 years old. 96. I thought I was off a year. That sister Elsie Funno, she couldn't make it, but her daughter is here. So can we just celebrate Dr. Pringle in the person, in the present for Sister Elsie Funno? To all the leaders, the ministers, the leaders of the True Vine Church, I say thank you. I'm not going to get to calling our names. I'm just going to say thank you to all of you. This is our first official ch uh, church anniversary after, after the pandemic, and we thank God for you. True Vine, listen, if you did not know, if ain't nobody ever told you, what's wrong with the band? Are y'all asleep? It's going down. Here at the vine. Look at somebody. You heard me? Now listen. Not only did we go through the pandemic, but we came out the pandemic like Mike Jones with our hands up in the air. Saying God did that thing for us. So, I want to tell you thank you. For 78 years, God had blessed us. And we pray that God will continue to bless us these awesome deacons we we meet every month every excuse me every monday and their first con, their first concern is you first conversation is how the people doing that's the church the building can fall down but we want to make sure you are right so i thank god for all the leaders that are here that have made this church what it is and we pray that God will continue to bless us. I'm done Dr. Johnson give him a hand as he comes back. I'm asking him to bless our food, give us our closing remarks and our benediction the speaker of the hour Dr. Johnson Y'all got to break it right there. When every time somebody talk money, I got to be real quiet. Ursus, I need an envelope. Quickly, Dr. Johnson want to make, look at Deacon Jack. He, he started reaching for one. You, the treasurer and the deacon, you start talking money. They start looking for an envelope. Can somebody bring an envelope? Dr. Johnson said he wants to make a contribution. Uh, they, they got an envelope. They, see, you say money here, true vine. Envelope, you need an envelope? Everybody pull out your envelope. Now watch it. If one of them has Sister Carter name on it, she will slide her envelope in that don't have a church name on it, so be careful. <laughs> Dr. Johnson, I'll close the remark. I really pray that my prayer is that something was said, and I'm going to give uh, a dollar for each year times three. So somebody multiply three times 78 for me. Come on, you mathematicians. No, it's more than that. Okay, so the three is once for the once for God the Father, once for God the Son, and once for the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is going under special. I can't be somewhere and not sow a seed. Um, I found that my blessings come when I do something for somebody else, and I do it. Not because I want to be heard or seen, but I do it because it's the right thing to do. And I always say to people, uh, how much did y'all say that was? Oh, my God, I made a mistake on the envelope. <laughs> Two. To this, to, to True Vine, thank you. To Pastor Carter, thank you. And to those of you that are here, thank you. My prayer is that God will continue to bless uh, this church and to bless its body. I have a quick prayer I want to pray outside of the prayer that he asked me to pray. If you would, bow your heads, please. Oh, gracious Father, there are many people that you put in my path. And sometimes you put them there for a reason for me to learn to grow.
hurt someone that was in my life for a while. And Lord, they're going through a terrible storm right now. And Father, I ask right now that you touch their ailing body. Let them know that you are still in control. I ask this in your son Jesus' name, my Lord. As we depart from this place, but not from your presence. As we leave this sanctuary to go into the fellowship hall to feed our bodies with physical food, we ask your gracious Father that you would continue to feed us the spiritual food that we need, that you know we need. We ask these things in your darling son Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. You ought to say it like you mean it. See, sometimes uh, our amens makes a difference in how God responds to us. I, uh, in my life, I've made a lot of terrible mistakes. I've done a lot of bad things. But God has blessed me to travel and touch the hearts of men. And when they hear my testimony, they know that I was on the road that they're either on or that they're struggling to get off. And for me, that's the greatest blessing. David said, Lord, I will, in Psalms 51, he said, Lord, I will teach men your precepts, your word, because now I know a little better how to get closer to you. God bless you. God keep you. To this choir, to this music department, to all that are present, to a handful of faces that I haven't seen. And one young man in the back told me it's been over 30 years. And uh, when my parents died, after my parents died, I stopped coming to bear. I got a piece of land that I don't even pass by to look at it. Uh, when I do come, visit with an uncle every now and then I'll try to catch somebody that I see but I want you to know and I really want you to stop and take a look I do it every morning I ask God God did I do anything yesterday to glorify to edify and to magnify you in the world I'm not a saint all have sinned and come short of the glory I'm a long ways from a perfect man but I do know that I'm on my way to heaven I can't make up for any hurt and pain that I may have brought but I can do everything that I can to show somebody else not to walk that path again True Vine thank you Pastor Carter, God bless you. Um, let's go eat. <laughs> Shall we stand? God bless this food. Bless those that prepared it. Bless our going and our coming until we meet again. May the grace of God, sweet me of his Holy Spirit, rest ruling by both now and forever. If you love him, you're not ashamed. Shout out amen. amen. If you're hungry, go through that door right there. Be blessed.